In this video, we are continuing our adventure looking through folds. So last week we got through pipe folds and this week we're talking about the zigzag fold. So unlike pipe folds, zigzag folds are a little more sporadic of a fold, but it kind of helps to know where they come from, why they generate on your clothing. Um, essentially the premise for zigzag folds, and it's not always the situation, but it's just the majority of the time, they are created where the fabric often bends on your clothes. What I mean by this is if you're wearing a long sleeve or a jacket, the zigzag folds are generally going to generate where you bend your elbow on the side that you bend your elbow not on the side where you know the fabric is stretching against the actual bone but on the side where you're bending where the creases become um, similar to this you know just move it down south and it's going to happen in the same place where you bend your knees on the back side of your knee where you bend um, this is just because of the fabric gets worn over time um, because of the compression. So one side is stretching, the other side is compressing, and it's kind of just like xylophoning into each other, right? So you get this kind of sporadic zigzag kind of pattern. And you can see it's, it's considered a zigzag because it's really just kind of back and forth. Like it goes in and back and around, and you just kind of get this like nice sporadic pattern. These folds don't exactly have an order to them. You can't really figure them out like you can figure out pipe folds, but we can still study them and kind of figure out a system that we can find that hopefully will help us understand them better. And maybe if we do want to use them in our art, we can then use it later in our imagination. So before looking into photos, I thought it would be helpful for us to look at how some artists interpret um, zigzag folds in a more simplified, maybe a little more linear of a look. So here we have on the left, a more simplified look at the zigzag folds. It doesn't say on here exactly where the zigzag folds are, but you should be able to see them as kind of like this traditional zigging and zagging shape. And then usually followed by some sort of a shadow underneath or in between, which creates that eventual look. It's also happening right here in this uh, diagram. And you can see what they're trying to mention here too, is that this happens when fabric just kind of compresses straight down on each other. This one right here just has a kind of jump forward. This is a twisting fold, so it's not the same thing as a zigzag fold, just to kind of mention that. So you don't want to get it confused because it's something that is more formed from a twist and not from the zigzag logic that we're looking towards. On this diagram on the right, we have a bit of more of a realistic approach. We have some tonal shades and stuff going on. Um, there's really only two zigzag drawings in here. We have the bend of the arm on this guy, and then the bend of the arm on this one. This, however, is the more classic approach. So let's just kind of take a look at that. And you can see, even though it's a little more complicated, we still have the same idea going on where we kind of have this zigzag shape forming through the surface and giving us this kind of half rectangular or like half diamond kind of um, shadow shape. And ironically, while making this video and doing some Instagram scrolling and reference looking, I found this drawing by Dave up here, Dave Character Art. If you guys know him, if you don't, you can go ahead and follow him. I, you know, don't know the guy at all, but just, you know, I want to make sure everyone has their credit for the art they created. But I do want to show how he handled creating these really nice folds with very simple information. He pretty much just had the tone of the jacket, which was this like light army-ish kind of green. And then really he just created that zig by giving us a shadow shape and then like maybe a little hint of light in there. Um, we do have a slightly darker green over here, but it was so he could create that diamond shape that I was talking to you guys about where you're gonna get one darker, one lighter pattern, but it's still all working together to go in there and create that shape. All right, so now that we have some artist examples, we kind of understand what a zigzag fold is in theory. Let's put it to practice. Um, what I'm going to do here is I have a bunch of reference images, as I always do. We're going to observe them and we're going to draw them together. So we know where zigzag folds happen. They happen in 
you know, parts of clothing where it folds. So we're mainly looking at long sleeve pants kind of things. Um, so here we have someone wearing a hoodie. Hoodies are perfect examples because they have an exuberant amount of fabric. You know, it's not skin tight um, and there's a lot of folds going on. Um, on this guy, there's actually a bunch of examples of zigzag folds. You can see them down here in the pants and on the other side of the pants as well. But where I want to look today is a little bit longer of a subject and we're going to look at the arm. All right, so with each one of these drawings, we do want to remember that the reason that we are looking at this stuff is for a purpose, right? We are putting clothes on our figures that we're drawing, essentially. That's what I'm fo focusing on in this series. So we do want to have a little bit of a ground understanding of figure drawing. So each one of these drawings that I do, um, I'm going to draw the underneath form. In order to understand what's happening with fabric wrapping around something, in this case, an arm, or in a broken down case, a cylinder shape, right? Um, you just want to understand a general idea of how thick, um, how long that object is underneath, and so that way you can more accurately wrap the fabric around it. You don't have to have a 100% pinpoint x-ray vision look at it, but as you can see here, just kind of threw in some cylinder shapes. And for my purposes of creating this hoodie, just the arm of the hoodie, it's more than good enough. So this is how all these drawings are gonna start off. We need something to understand why our fabric is reacting the way it's reacting. So from here, I'm gonna throw on some of the base coat of the hoodie here, just kind of keep it nice and puffy. Um, there's no real point in this where it's necessarily against the skin. So you don't really have like a uniform kind of area. Um, so kind of like the more baggy and puffy you make it, the larger the hood is going to look essentially. So you can see where I'm coming in here. I'm like hooking around. I'm creating a hook of a shape and then I'm going a bit below it to come back and draw the rest of that fold. Folds kind of hook into each other as well as overlap. So sometimes that's something to consider when you're drawing. But just like when we did the pipe fold, if you want to remember, there's always going to be that part that's bulging out closest to us, and that's overlapping the fabric that is behind it, which is just a little bit further away. All right, so we have a good ground shape to build off here for our hoodie. And essentially what we're going to do is try to find these pockets of the kind of diamond shape or the half diamond shape that I was talking about earlier when we were looking at the artist diagrams of how they drew them. So where I'm looking for is essentially, uh, we want to remember fabric folds and stuff, the information is given to us as in lights and darks, tones and shadows. Um, so here I'm looking for the darker pink areas, right? Because this, this side of the sweater is pink. Because um, that's giving me that shadow information. So I'm seeing these like pockets, these little eye shapes um, that are within this jacket. And I'm just going to kind of draw them in very loosely. I'm not going for something super accurate here at all. Um, but I just want to have a rough loose estimate of where this is, throw in a tone that is darker than my jacket. So in this case, I'm just working on white. So anything is darker. And from there, just kind of finding that, that fold so that I can understand where the fabric is popping out and where the fabric is sinking in. <clears throat> Remember, if it helps, what's happening is the arm is slightly bent. And because there's such an excess of fabric, it is uh, it's on a tube and it's just being scrunched down and turning into a bit of like an accordion shape, right? All right, so let's try this practice on another type of fabric. So another fabric that really gets worn pretty well is denim. Right, so denim is a pair of pants that people can wear, you know, depending on how high quality denim is, they can wear their whole life if they wanted to, right? So these pants really get a seam in them. 
Um, people are wearing them all day. They're bending their legs, they're sitting, etc., etc., and so they get really worn down. Now these pictures uh, look like they're probably newer jeans, uh, but I have a couple examples of jeans here, and you can see that we definitely have a good identity of zigzag folds coming through here. You can see some of the folds coming around this way. And because these are a stiffer denim over here, you can still see them. They're just kind of lighter. They're coming through this way and they're creating like little, little zags here. But where I think we're really getting a good demonstration of this and where we're gonna practice on this example today is down here at the leg. I really see a nice play of all these zigzagging shapes so we can find those. All right, so one thing we want to look at um, here of course, I'm going to be drawing the underground shape here, so I'm just trying to think lower leg. We don't have to draw too much. Um, but we do want to have in mind that denim is a different fabric than hoodie, right? Um, hoodies are usually made from a soft cotton kind of blend material, so it's thicker, um, it's rounder. Uh, I'm not really a great word for it, but fluffier, right? So denim, which you can see here, is thicker so we're getting a little more hard edges in here you can kind of see some sharp straight bends of the fabric not such of like a ruffled kind of round look to it so you kind of want to emphasize that too it's another way to demonstrate what kind of fabric you're drawing or you know what kind of fabric is the character you're drawing wearing I always want to think about how can you best represent these things to the audience that you are showing so okay, here we want to think about what we're drawing over. Um, this is like a boot cut kind of jean here, it looks like. And you can tell that the, the boot is high up there against cow wavy, right? It goes up the leg um, a bit, about halfway up, uh, most likely. I mean, there's shorter and higher cowboy boots, I'm sure. But I'm just gonna assume, you know, a quarter of the way, halfway up, whatever it is pretty much right under that red line that I drew. I'm assuming maybe like a couple inches down is about where the top of that boot is. And that's like, that's what's giving us like a really nice scrunched feeling too of the pants are kind of wrapping around that and then scrunching where they're getting stuck on the boot <clears throat> towards the heel. So I drew in my leg shape, which gives me a little bit of solid ground to build off of. So this also really helps when drawing fabric, it's really easy to just kind of draw like a lumpy wiggly line. We want to avoid that. We want to think of why is the fabric bending in each one of these angles. And you don't have to draw every single fold. I would recommend that depending on what you're drawing, you don't draw every single fold. You want to look for the big ones that really kind of come out to you first because those are the ones that are giving you the information of the pants folding. The little ones you can go for if you want to practice your details. You know, of course, there's nothing wrong with practice. Um, but I'm just saying in terms of interpreting what's going on here, just think about the big folds that you see. Like, so look over at that leg that we're doing right now. What are some of the big shadow shape changes that you see, the zigzag folds coming in? So I'm just trying to capture a couple of the big ones with a light amount of tone. Nothing too crazy here. Sometimes you can go in with two tones inside those eye shapes um, to kind of show that one is catching a little more light than the other side. Again, that's a little bit of a bigger detail jump. But essentially what we're looking for is like a series of eyes. So let's keep this practice going. So just like I said, where um, we were looking for a series of eyes, so here we have it perfectly. Let's try to, I was getting a little detailed that is definitely a fault of mine. So let's try to simplify a little more. Let's look for these eye shapes here. So we have two examples of a hoodie again. Um, hoodies are just kind of a classic example. Like I said, a lot of fabric, really long sleeves. No one's arms are usually as long as a hoodie sleeve. And so that fabric is always bent and it has that nice bent kind of fabric memory to it. So we get really beautiful zigzag folds. So again, just throwing in a simple shape here. Um, does not have to be super accurate. I'm kind of creating a little more of a bend on the arm than is probably happening in the picture. Again, I just need a solid shape to put my less solid um, hoodie looking structure on top of. 
It might not seem like it's gonna make a difference, but I promise you guys in the long run, if you just build a wiggly lumpy shape without doing a ground drawing, it's gonna look just like you drew a wiggly lumpy shape in the middle of space. Something about having that underlying drawing and clothing it really does solidify your drawing. So I'm just gonna try to figure out a little bit of the overall shape here. Um, most of this arm is doing the zigzag, at least below, right above the elbow, I would say. So I'm gonna draw in the full arm here. Plus it's kind of weird if you're gonna draw most of the arm not to just draw in the rest too, right? Uh, we do have the hand hidden by fabric though, so that's nice. It's the classic artist trick coming back again to save our day. Throw it in the pocket. So another thing that I like about drawing the underlined form is you can kind of try to figure out, and this is going to help you when you're drawing from your imagination too, why does fabric lump and gather in certain areas? So that's what I was doing right there at the bottom of that arm where I did like one, two, three bumps there, which you can see on the reference picture too. I'm trying to think why is it gathering there? You know, what about the arm bending is making it do that? And then now that I have all those shapes in there I can come in and start to find where my fabric starts to poke out and accordion into each other so again I'm just trying to look for the bigger eye looking shapes here it's really easy to get stuck in all the little nooks and crannies here you know I do it all the time when I'm looking and studying fabric uh, but you want to try your best to just not get too stuck on the little things and really just look for the big things At least first get the big things first then come back for the little stuff You might find after you throw in the big things that your pictures already looking too busy And if you drew in the little things, it would just look like a bunch of spots, right? So I'm just kind of gathering everywhere. I see these kind of like eye shapes um, the, the diamond kind of half shapes, whatever you want to call them, however they look to you. And I'm just building it up like so. And so with this one I wanted to try the idea of laying down a tone. So what I'm doing here, and this is going to be another video entirely too, but when you're drawing with something that has a value to it, such as this sweater is blue, blue is not the same as white, right? So blue in itself, if you were to take the color information from this picture, would be a form of gray. This is a dark blue. It would actually be a pretty, you know, mid, like mid-tone gray. Um, so I recommend trying this. Like, give yourself a tone on your paper. Smear it over, if you, you know, smear it with your finger, whatever you want over the drawing you just did, and then come back in and find those shadows of the fold. You're gonna get a much more realistic and in-depth kind of look at your picture. And then the coolest thing too is you can always come back if you have some sort of white um, highlighting tool, like a white colored pencil if you're drawing on tone paper, or you know, white out or the white gel pen. And like I'm doing here, you can just throw in a light indication of the highlights catching the tip of that fold. Okay, so now we are gonna look at something a little more complicated, right? But try not to get too stuck on this. Pretty much the same fabric. It's a denim blend. It's not 100% um, denim, I would say. But what I wanna do again is just focus on what we're focusing on, which is gonna be that knee box right there, which is where th these pants are tighter, right? But the fabric is still gathering in a certain area. Um, if it's not leggings or something like that, and it's still a thicker material, the fabric is still gonna gather. You can see it happening at the boots, you know, where the, the pants are going down to the ankle, <clears throat> and you can see it happening a lot in the knee. So, you know, every single one of these legs here has some sort of zigzag shape going on. So if you don't wanna do the same one I'm doing, obviously, you know, do your own thing. You are your own person, but I'm focusing on that leg all the way on the left for right now. So just kind of drawing in a loose indication of this leg. And then I just kind of wanted to figure it out. So I'm starting with that middle seam, which I can tell is right over the knee there. And remember the knee has a little notch that comes in. It creates a little cliff side right over the ankle. 
So that's why that fabric is poking out and jutting out there. And then as well, you have the cap that pokes out. This is what's causing this fabric <clears throat> that's fitted to a, to a degree to gather around that leg. You have a lot of different plane changes going on in the leg there. It's not just a straight tube going down, right? If it was a straight tube, you probably only have the fabric gathering at the ankle in terms of this kind of pants, unless you know he was bending or walking. All right, so try not to get too stuck on the small details like I'm definitely doing, but um, try to move down to the bottom, get in your ankle, your angles. You don't have to draw all this stuff here, guys. If you want to just focus on the knee, just focus on the knee. That's where I'm going to focus. Um, I always just get caught up in details all the time. It's just too fun sometimes. You guys can definitely see the ground structure coming in here, my underlined drawing, really helping me. That's what I'm wrapping these folds around. I'm not just blindly assuming there's a lump here and there's a lump there. I'm figuring where that bend is being created on the ankle itself, right? And then now I'm coming in and finding my eye shapes. This is a thicker material. Um, it doesn't look super, super worn. So we have to remember that it's kind of giving us more of a jagged, straighter, harder edge um, on those eye shapes. And it's not giving us such big hoodie eye shapes, right, that we've been seeing. So again, throw in some tone inside those eye shapes. Focus on the big ones before you go jump to the little ones. And I have one more example for you guys. Okay, so this is the last one for today. We have a different material than we've been looking at in the past couple ones. So definitely keep that in mind. We have a kind of canvas material here. It's like a waterproof jacket. So these are very straight tube-like um, fabrics that aren't really meant to bend too much. And you can kind of see that in the um, arm structure here but we still get some really nice, interesting pipe folds, even though they're subtle. So we want to practice with that. We want to try it out. So we're going to go ahead and draw in my underline drawing here. Just a rough guess of what I think her arm is looking like leading to her hand. And just a light indication of what the hands are doing. This isn't a hand video, but if you guys do want to check out a hand video, I do have that for you. And I can link it up there in the top right. Alright, so again, when we're drawing this, remember, this we want to think what kind of material is this? This is a canvas material. This entire right side is essentially just three straight lines going down. You can see a couple angle changes. The other side is where we have a little bend in play. Um, but the right side, at least from where we're looking, is pretty much stretched. Not exactly stretched, but it's nice and tight along the side. Here on the inside of the arm is where the fabric starts to bend a little bit. You know, the fabric is gathered a little bit at that elbow, like we were talking about in the beginning. And so here's where we can kind of find our, our zigzag folds, our eye shapes in here, right? We got some nice big ones. Now I'm kind of finding these long ones here. These are a little more of like a stretch fold that you're getting, <clears throat> which we can get to in other fold videos coming soon. But I mean, I already drew the whole arm, so I had to commit. I was committed. <laughs> um, but these are essentially long stretched out um, folds that you would still see in a zigzag pattern. But the zigzag pattern is more so happening right there at the elbow. So let's get back to drawing those guys in. So I'm just kind of looking for the big shapes again. Um, I don't want to go overboard with this because the more, more overboard I go with this, the less it's going to seem like this canvas kind of waterproof jacket. And it's going to start to seem like some sort of fabric, right? So remember, um, I know I keep saying this broken record over here, but just think about what fabric you are really drawing on and what do you want to portray to the audience that you're showing. 
Alright guys, as this finishes up, this is the last drawing here, so this video is going to end in a few seconds. As always, I just want to say thank you guys for watching. If you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments, please. And other than that, have a great day.